in the Hero Association headquarters. We're detecting an unusually high tectonic movement underneath Z City. What? How can this be? It's geographically not possible. We have reason to believe that it's some kind of monster, sir. The city has been abandoned for quite some time and several monsters have been spotted leaving and entering the area of this tectonic activity. We have a report of King entering the neighboring city not too long ago, sir. He should be close enough to detect the tremors and go to check them out. Hmm. Call every available S-Class hero right away and have them come here. We will organize a unit to check things out. But sir, if King's already there... He might need backup. Besides, we do not know if he will go or not. Like I said, call every available S-Class hero here right away. Boros looks up. I've killed a leader, but that doesn't mean that I can't have any more fun now, does it? There are still plenty of monsters up there for me to fight. Maybe all of them at once could actually make me exert myself a little more. As he says those words, Boros powers down to conserve his energy and to make things more challenging for himself in this upcoming battle before crouching down and jumping up. He plows right through the ceiling and emerges in the main room of the Monster Association. Gyoro Gyoro looks at him in shock. Y you're alive? What happened down there? Where is Orochi? I killed him. The battle was quite fun, but in the end I didn't get what I was after. So now it's all of your turn. Try to make this exciting for me, would you? Wasting no time at all, the alien dashes at Gyoro Gyoro. She tries to activate her psychic powers, but before she can, she's blown to bits. The monsters look on in shock. Some of them start fleeing, while others jump down to fight the intruder. In particular, Black S, Overgrown Rover, and... The ground beneath Boros quakes as two giant claws shoot out from underneath the alien. Boros jumps up to avoid them, but that proves to be a mistake as Elder Centipede erupts from the ground and smashes into Boros mid-air. The insect monster drives the alien into the ceiling. It keeps pushing the alien further and further. Soon, it blows Boros out of the ground and onto the surface. The alien rolls off of the centipede and lands on the street of the abandoned Z city. Soon, monsters who still want to fight emerge after him through the tunnel Elder Centipede has made. Black S, Homeless Emperor, Fear Ugly, and Gums wanting revenge, Overgrown Rover and Pure Blood, as well as some other lower level monsters who don't know their worth like Rhino Wrestler. Goketsu, being intelligent enough to know when to fight and when not to, decides to sit this one out. He had a great deal of respect for Orochi, having experienced his power firsthand. And if Boros has beaten even him, then there is no point in facing the alien. The martial artist retreats into one of the tunnels. Black S begins to multiply as Homeless Emperor and Rover start blasting Boros with energy attacks. Boros simply shrugs the explosions off. Orochis were way stronger, and even they couldn't deal any damage to the alien, so what hope do these two fools have? Don't tell me this is the best you lot can do! Boros charges at Rover and begins pummeling him with powerful blows. The massive hound howls in pain as the alien finishes the combo with a devastating kick which sends Rover flying through several buildings. Homeless Emperor looks on stunned at first, but then begins charging up the most powerful sphere of energy he can muster. Seeing this, Boro smirks and decides to let the man prepare his attack. Maybe this one could at least make him tickle a bit. So in the meantime, the alien figures he'd settle things with gums and ugly first. He begins walking toward the two of them, but Black S gets in the way. Or rather, a million Black S's get in the way. The dominator of the universe is a little surprised, but soon figures out that this is S's ability once he sees one of the clones clone himself. I see. A cloning ability. Quite interesting. It's not so much cloning as it is multiplying. I can increase my number to several dozen trillion. Think you can take down that many? It doesn't matter if there's a thousand, a million, a billion, or a trillion. 
A weakling is still a weakling. The alien lunges at the army of Black S and starts plowing through them. Each and every single one of his blows generates shockwaves that wipe out dozens, if not hundreds of S's in an instant. But the tiny terror keeps multiplying and soon, an entire tsunami of Black S crashes down on Boros, who simply smiles before letting out a surge of energy and blowing the entire wave back, disintegrating thousands of Black S. However, the wave is rejuvenated by a few more million copies and soon washes up on the alien again. Still think you can win? I am a countless number of me. It doesn't matter how you strike, blast, tear, or twist, I'll keep multiplying. And yet, the more you multiply, the weaker you become. You'll never be able to hurt me. And I can keep going for weeks. Boros retorts before kicking one of the S's so hard that the generated shockwave disintegrates several hundred black S. Among this wave of bodies, Ugly and Gums attempt to reach Boros. Further away, Homeless Emperor is done charging his attack. The sphere he has created drowns the area in a bright white light like a miniature star, blocking out the actual sun. Take this! All the power given to me by God! Homeless Emperor screams as he lowers his hands, dropping the ginormous bomb on Boros, and, by extension, the army of Black S as well as Gums and Ugly. The energy sphere explodes, nuking the entire battlefield and wiping out everything in a radius of several kilometers. The city around the battleground is completely vaporized. The only things left in the area are Homeless Emperor, the Downed Rover, Elder Centipede and a few Black S clothes. S immediately starts yelling at Homeless Emperor for blowing up most of his army, but the man simply shrugs. You were a perfect distraction to keep that alien in one place. I simply used the chance you gave me to get rid of that parasite. Get rid of who? The rumble in the center of the explosion suddenly bursts open and Boro stands up. He dusts himself off and smirks. That was a nice one. I actually felt a slight sting. Still, nowhere near enough to be satisfactory. Seems like I got my hopes up too soon. Orochi, and now all of you. None of the monsters in this association can give me a challenge. Saitama remains as the only living thing on this planet that could make me break a sweat. Boro states before seeming to remember something. Oh, and by the way, you there with the energy spheres. Boros points a finger at Homeless Emperor. You mentioned God before. I would like to have a word with you about that when I'm done with the others. Homeless Emperor looks at Boros in shock. There's no way the alien actually survived his strongest blast, is there? And he wants to know about God too? Why? How does he even know about God's existence? Boros begins walking toward Homeless Emperor. No! S stay away! The man screams, terrified, and begins to fire off hundreds of blasts at the alien, desperately trying to keep him at a distance. Unfazed, Boros simply walks through the assault, tanking the shots head on without sustaining as much as a scratch. Please, your strongest blast did nothing. What makes you think this will be any different? Boros emerges from the explosions right in front of Homeless Emperor and pulls back his fist. The alien punches the man in the face and his head is blown off of his body, instantly killing him. Boros' eye widens. What? I could have sworn I held back enough to keep him alive. Knowing how powerful the energy spheres are gave Boros an idea of how much strength to use to not kill Homeless, but still put him down. However, he didn't know that underneath his light powers, Homeless Emperor was just a normal human and ended up killing him. Meanwhile, Black S is furious. Can't give you a challenge, huh? Don't look down on me! If a challenge is what you want, then that's what you'll get! Black S begins to multiply rapidly. Soon, he covers the entire area. Not just the area. 
Half of the entire city is soon plunged into a sea of darkness as the dwarf continues to split. What follows is an absolute massacre, as Boros powers up a bit before initiating a barrage of blows so intense that each one of them generates shockwaves wide enough to kill tens of thousands of black ass, and the alien fires these punches off faster than a machine gun could fire bullets. Within minutes, literal millions of black ass are destroyed, and yet, the monster keeps multiplying. Why are you telling me to wait? I already told you, we need to wait for the other heroes to arrive so we can form a proper team to go check the situation out. If there's a monster out there that can cause tectonic movements, then I am the only one who can face him. Any others would just get in the way. Besides, we don't know how much time we have before the creature makes its way to other, more populated cities. Stitch sighs. As much as he hates to admit it, the number 2 S-Class hero is right. If there is indeed a monster in Z-City capable of emitting the kind of energy the association picked up earlier, there are very few heroes who could actually ever hope to take it on. There is always Blast, but there is no telling if he'll show up for something like this. And King hasn't responded to any of his calls. There is no telling what his status is. So Tatsumaki is the only one who could be tasked with something as large-scale as this. Alright, you can go. It's not like I could stop you anyway. Just please be careful out there. Tatsumaki pouts. Have you forgotten who you're speaking to? I don't need any warnings from you. Boros punches away a few more thousand black ass. He's been at this for several minutes now, and as entertaining as the seemingly never-ending army of dummies to destroy has been, it's getting old. Fast. Without any prior warning, the alien suddenly stops fighting, confusing the one monster army. I'm done. Huh? What? I'm done fighting you. Oh, I get it. You're running out of stamina, aren't you? Was you saying you can go for weeks just a bluff? Well, too bad, cause I'm not done with you yet. Not until you're begging for mercy. I'm bored. What? You're boring me. I had some fun at first, punching thousands of you out of existence. But now it's just repetitive. You're no challenge for me. If I wanted to, I could wipe out this entire area with one single blast and eradicate every single one of you. It doesn't matter how much you can multiply if there is nothing left to multiply. If every body of yours is gone, then there will be nothing left to make more of you. You're easy. All that talk and yet, you're not even worth killing. I let the heroes have their fun with you. I'm sure there's already some on the way. Veins pop out of Black S's face. Why, you little... His body shakes with rage. I'll kill you! Suddenly, all of the Black S bodies begin merging into one. Boros looks on confused as the S's keep piling into each other. Whatever you're doing, bring it on. Boros! So far you have killed 173,896,753 of me, and 65,999,826,175,000 is the current number of me inside me. Can you defeat us all when we merge? Let's go, guys! 66 million ultimate combination! Going golden won't be enough. We'll rise further! Oh, I see. Fusion. Boros smirks. The spark of excitement returns to his eye. He crosses his arms and awaits for his foe to be formed. A brilliant light engulfs the entire city as the ground shakes. Far below the ground, Psychos can sense the immense energy up on the surface. She figures it must be one of the cadres, but can't figure out which. She didn't think any of them could be capable of this level of power. 
However, right now that's not what matters. She continues to search for Orochi. Meanwhile, several kilometers away, Saitama and Genos make their way through one of the tunnels of the Monster Association. They faced a couple monsters on the way, but nothing really serious. The thick walls of the hideout make Genos' radar pretty much useless, so the two heroes are left completely lost. Above the ground, another presence makes itself known. During the chaos, Phoenix Man makes his way onto the surface and attempts to sneak away. Boros notices him, but doesn't bother to pursue the small fry. And so, the bird monster is successfully able to escape the battlefield. At the same time, Rover stands up and shakes off the rubble he'd been covered in after crashing through several buildings thanks to the alien's attack. It notices Boros and, trembling with fear, runs away. Huh. That thing is pretty durable. Might make a good pet for me. I hope you enjoyed your time at the top, because it ends now. Suddenly, Platinum S lunges at Boros and plows his fist right into the alien's face. The Dominator of the Universe lets out a big grunt and is sent flying backwards. Furious at the alien's trash talk from before, S doesn't waste a second and charges at Boros again. He catches up to him and delivers a furious elbow to the eye on the alien's chest, shoving Boros into the ground with enough force to blow away several nearby buildings. Platinum then grabs Boros by the face and runs at top speed, dragging the alien through the ground for several kilometers before throwing him into the air. S jumps up after Boros and knees him in the back before punching him back down to the ground. Not done yet, he rockets at the alien and lands his feet on his stomach, creating a huge crater and making the Dominator of the Universe cough up blood. Satisfied for now, Platinum S jumps back and lands gracefully a few meters away from Boros before crossing his arms and putting on a sinister smirk. How's that for a challenge? At the same time, deep below the ground, Psychos continues her search for Orochi when she spots a pile of flesh, which begins making its way toward her. Boros lies motionless on the ground for a couple of seconds before letting out a massive laugh, which confuses Platinum S. The alien slowly gets back up to his feet, wiping the blood off of his mouth. Yes, that is more like it. You are the opponent I've been seeking. He laughs again in pure joy before loosening the grip on his power and letting his aura run wild as he powers up. Seeing this, Platinum S gets into a fighting stance. Very well. This is going to be the perfect chance to test out my new power. I just hope you last long enough for me to stretch my muscles. Suddenly, the standoff is interrupted when Elder Centipede rockets out from under the ground and lodges at Boros. The alien had almost forgotten this thing was still here. He prepares to defend himself, but the insect suddenly freezes. A green glow surrounds his body and begins crushing it. What is going on here? The green-haired Esper descends from the sky, having just arrived to the battleground. She clutches her palm and at that moment, the force crushing Elder Centipede increases greatly. Its armor starts cracking and soon its entire body is condensed into a ball the size of a small building. The monster dies almost instantly. Class S, Rank 2, Tornado of Terror. What a surprise. Class S, Rank 2? That means you're strong, right? The second strongest in the Hero Association? This must be my lucky day. Things just keep getting better and better. Before anyone can say or do anything else, a massive wave of energy bursts out of the ground nearby, destroying a huge portion of the city. The ground shakes as massive tendrils emerge from the Monster Association hideout and dig into the earth. A giant Psychos rises out of the ground, followed by the ginormous monster portion of her body. Tatsumaki, S, and Boros all look on in shock. Where in the world did this thing come from? Boros feels something familiar about the creature. The energy coming from that thing resembles... Orochi? 
Boros, where are you? We have a score to settle! Sairochi shouts out. The fusion between the two monsters seemingly having kept Orochi's memories well enough to hold a significant grudge against the alien. Well, sure seems like someone has a target on his back. Platinum S smirks while looking at the newly formed entity in the distance. He turns to face Boros again, but just as he does, he feels the alien's fist crash into his cheek. Here, let me repay you for earlier. Boros laughs as he starts pummeling the monster and sends him crashing into a building. He prepares to follow up his attack, but before he can, a green aura surrounds him, freezing him in place. Tatsumaki points her finger upwards and lifts Boros high into the air. The Esper prepares to start crushing the alien. Further away, Sairochi is still looking around. Suddenly, she spots the alien floating in the sky a couple kilometers away from her. Taking this opportunity, she extends both of her hands in front of herself. Found you! She shouts as he fires off a massive beam of energy. Hearing this, Boros attempts to turn around, but to no avail as Tatsumaki is still holding him in place. He tenses up his muscles, lets out some energy and breaks free of her hold. He then turns around to look at Sairochi. Once he does, all he sees is a ginormous energy beam quickly approaching him. Realizing that he can't dodge an attack this wide in such a short amount of time, the alien raises one of his arms in front of himself. The beam crashes into the palm of his hand at full force. Boros grunts as he attempts to block the entire blast. He feels his hand getting singed and lets out a roar, pushing back against the energy. Tatsumaki watches from the side, amazed that the alien can take so much energy head on and not be instantly disintegrated. Her amazement is quickly interrupted when Platinum S bursts out of the building he'd been launched into and lunges at her. With no time to spare, the Esper dodges to the side and counters by picking up several buildings with her telekinesis and sending them flying at Platinum S, who smiles and punches them all into pieces before resuming his attack on Tatsumaki. Sairochi stops firing her beam. As the dust settles, Boros is revealed with his right arm missing. Pretty impressive, but now it's my turn. He regrows his arm, lands on a building and jumps off of it, aiming to get closer to his new enemy. At the same time, Tatsumaki flexes her psychic power by pushing Platinum S back and launching him at Sairochi. Psychos grow several dragons from the base of her legs and begins rapid firing lasers in Boros's direction, destroying huge parts of the city below. The alien speeds up until all that can be seen from him is a flash of light and dodges all the beams. However, Platinum S, unprepared, almost gets hit by one of them. What the hell? Aren't we on the same side? He shouts to Psychos, who can't hear him over the sound of her beams destroying everything around her. Fine! You wanna be another bug I squash on my way to become the Monster King? Be my guest! Tatsumaki realizes that Sairochi's attacks have enough range to reach other cities and figures that she needs to deal with her now. Meanwhile, deep below the surface, deeper than even the Mural of God, something awakens. A creature far larger than anything the Hero Association has ever seen. It receives an order from another worldly presence and begins to make its way to the surface to fulfill it. Psychos, seeing that all three of her foes are now trying to attack her specifically, figures that she needs to create as much wide-scale destruction as possible to hit all of them at once. And so she fires off her biggest laser yet, aiming to hit all of her enemies with it. Tatsumaki can sense the energy being built up and is able to get out of the way right as the beam fires. Boros and Platinum S don't have that luxury, but their speed is enough to get them out of the way as well. The laser slices through the crust of the Earth and shaves a continental disk off the face of the planet. The power on display shocks Platinum S and Tatsumaki, who begins questioning where all this power could have come from. It even shocks Psychos herself and she begins to marvel at her own ability. The continent crashes back down onto the ground, causing massive tsunamis and shaking the entire northern hemisphere. Boros is elated. Yes, this is more like it. 
You're clearly far stronger than Orochi ever was. He shouts as he jumps up, aiming to land a punch on Psychos. Before he can follow through with his attack, the ground starts quaking as a massive creature shoots out of the earth. An absolutely monstrous centipede rockets straight at Boros from underneath the planet's crush and smashes into him, sending him flying back to the ground next to Platinum S. Elder Centipede? No, I am Sage Centipede. I have been sent here by our father, the Earth, to help you destroy the abominable fist that's turned against God. God? You know about him? I know more than you, but that's not what matters right now. The two of us are to destroy the alien that's been giving you trouble. Hearing this, Platinum S lets out a chuckle. Man, you have a talent for making enemies, don't you? The more the better. Boros laughs as he gets back up to his feet and dusts himself off. He looks up at the two behemoths before him with a wide grin on his face. I do not know where you creatures keep coming from, but I won't complain. This planet is so much fun already. And you do not belong here. This planet is about to erase you from existence, alien. Without wasting any more time, Sage Centipede begins rapidly marching at Boros, and by extension at Platinum S as well, who is standing right next to him. Hey, Boros, let's team up for now, shall we? Take out all these clowns interfering with our battle and then have a glorious 1v1. What do you say? Boros turns to the monster. You really think I would take an offer like that? The alien suddenly punches us in the face, sending him flying. A moment later, he turns to the charging centipede and extends both of his arms in front of himself. He opens the palms of his hands and plants his feet firmly on the ground. You're not even going to dodge? The insect monster charges at the alien at full speed and swings its massive mandibles at Boros. The dominator of the universe smirks. He catches the enormous blades with his hands as Sage Centipede smashes into him. The speed and momentum of the charge pushes Boros back several hundred meters, but the alien stands strong and soon he's able to stop the march. The insect grunts as he attempts to close his mandibles on Boros' waist to slice him into two. But try as he might, the alien doesn't budge an inch. What's wrong? This can't be all you've got, can it? You insignificant insect! Boros prepares to counterattack, but just as he is about to make his move, a giant beam of energy crashes down on him from above and knocks him away. Sairochi has lent a hand to her new ally, but she is soon forced to turn her attention elsewhere when Tatsumaki lifts several giant rocks into the air and hurls them at the monster. Suddenly, Platinum S jumps up at the Esper from the ground and wraps his head tentacle around her leg. He spins rapidly and throws the Esper down to the ground before lunging at her with a kick. Tatsumaki, using her psychic powers, is able to stop herself from crashing into the city below. She notices the monster's attack rocketing at her, and, at the last second, is able to fly out of the way, leaving S's kick to smash into the ground. The force from the kick cracks the ground in a several hundred meter radius, and whatever buildings are still there crumble. If that kick had hit her, Tatsumaki shudders at the thought. She raises her hands to attack S, but notices Sairochi launch a massive beam at her from the side. The Esper is forced to put up a shield to protect herself, but at the same time, Platinum S lunges at her again. Enough! Tatsumaki shouts out and a massive green aura surrounds her. She raises both of her hands into the air and everything around her begins rising. The Esper puts all her power into one massive feat of power. Buildings crumble and the ground shakes as the entire city is lifted thousands of meters into the air. All the debris and the sheer force of the move knocks Platinum S and Sairochi's beam away. 
The effects of the outburst can be felt by Sage Centipede and Boros as well, as the ground there is also not spared from the number 2 hero's rampage. Tatsumaki doesn't stop. She continues to show off her power as the ground rises further and further. The city is sent dozens of kilometers into the air, creating a bulge in the earth visible from space. What the hell is going on? Tectonic movements? It's as if a new mountain is forming. You shouldn't ponder on such things in the heat of battle. Boros punches the centipede in its face, cracking its exoskeleton. The monster growls in pain, but soon regenerates and attacks the alien with a centipede grand march, hitting the alien with his arms hundreds of times over. The attack actually makes the dominator of the universe feel a slight sting. Finally, he's feeling something while actually exerting a decent amount of power. Progress is being made. Meanwhile, Tatsumaki finally stops her rage fueled outburst. In the end, a new mega mountain has been formed. A mountain that's as wide as a small continent and as tall as multiple dozen Everests stacked on top of each other. This new mega mountain shifts the face of the planet. The Esper lets out a sigh. She pants a bit and lands on the ground. This should make things a lot easier for her moving forward. She will not have to worry about stray attacks hitting other cities, as now the battlefield is high enough that stray beams will most likely end up flying into space harmlessly. However, she doesn't let her guard down. The Esper knows that her enemies are not down yet. She'll need a more direct attack to actually kill them. As she thinks that to herself, Sairochi bursts out of the newly formed Mega Mountain. You're really something else, aren't you, Tornado of Terror? You certainly live up to your name. A sweat drop makes its way down the monster's face. At the same time, further away, Sage Centipede emerges from the surface with Boros following suit. Finally, Platinum S emerges in the middle of the two battlegrounds. He looks around. What incredible destructive power. I'll be better off leaving those two espers to duke it out and tire each other out. In the meantime, I might as well finish my fight with Boros. And so, the monster makes its way to the alien, who is fighting the giant insect monster. Boros keeps destroying parts of the creature, but it keeps regenerating. The battle is flipped on its head when Platinum S jumps into the fray by attacking Boros. The two of them get into an exchange of kicks and punches, which is soon interrupted by Sage Centipede charging at both of them. The two warriors jump up and land on top of the massive creature's head. They then proceed to run down the centipede's back all while clashing with each other. Understandably, the sage isn't happy about his back being used as an arena and begins to rotate rapidly, shaking the two humanoids off of himself. Platinum S and Boros continue their battle on the ground. They dart around at faster than light speeds, kicking and punching each other with enough force to shake the whole area. Sage Centipede watches on in awe. He struggles to even keep up with the two warriors. Soon, he gets annoyed at that. Stop jumping around, you fleas! Centipede Grand March! He sends his entire body crashing down on the battlefield and moves it at great speed, punching everything with its 6,666 legs as it goes along. The attack reshapes part of the battlefield by launching huge chunks of rock into the air while digging craters into the ground with all the punches. With an attack as large scale as this, it's bound to eventually hit its targets. However, Boros and Platinum S are able to avoid the march for the most part and continue their fight. This only serves to agitate the centipede even more. Just then, a stray laser collides with the insect's back. He turns around, furious, only to see Sairochi clashing with Tatsumaki a good distance away. What are you doing? We are on the same side, you moron! Sairochi, just noticing what she's done, also becomes mad. Who are you calling a moron? It's your own damn fault that you're such a big target that even a stray blast can hit you. Sage Centipede growls in anger. Besides, I do not need you to deal with that worm, Boros. Tatsumaki is clearly a bigger issue. 
If you want to make yourself useful, then get over here and attack her. You'll make for some good bait. That is the final straw. You're dead! The insect charges at Sairochi at full speed. She prepares to attack him, but is interrupted by Tatsumaki psychically binding her arms. The green-haired Esper lets out a small laugh. Seriously? Picking a fight with your own ally? You're just giving me an even bigger advantage. Sage Centipede reaches Psychos and begins wrapping his body around hers and peppering it with thousands of blows. Sairochi grunts in pain and rage. How dare you! I am a superior life form chosen by God himself! She yells as she puts all her psychic power to use. She exerts herself to the limit and blasts the centipede off of herself, launching its entire body into the air. At the same time, Platinum S and Boros clash nearby, and the monster sees an opportunity. He jumps up toward the insect and grabs a hold of the end of its tail. He grips it tightly before swinging Sage Centipede's entire body at Boros. The insect lets out shouts of confusion as the alien giggles in amusement. Quite the bat you found there, isn't it? He laughs as he punches the centipede in the face, stopping its momentum and shattering its exoskeleton. S lets go of the creature, letting it fall to the ground. The insect grunts in pain, but regenerates his armor and is now more furious than ever. He looks at Boros, his eyes blazing with anger. How dare you! I'll show you what happens when you make Father Earth mad! Let's see how you deal with all 6,666 of my legs working in tandem! 6,666 leg grand drill! The insect connects its two large mandibles, forming a sharp point, before lunging at Boros while spinning at great speed like a drill. The alien smirks, welcoming the challenge. He stands his ground and once again extends both hands in front of himself. Give me everything you've got! He catches the drill, but the sheer momentum, speed, mass, and ferocity of the attack overwhelms his stance and the drill starts pushing him back. Boros can barely keep the tip of the drill from reaching his chest as he's driven down the side of the mountain at incredible speed. Platinum S watches on as the two monsters rocket down the mountain. He realizes that the two of them will likely reach the foot of the mountain if the drill doesn't stop. And so, for now, he turns to see what the two espers are up to, but all he can see are two massive tornadoes of psychic power clashing with each other. S runs over to check things out. Meanwhile, the drill reaches the foot of the mountain and slams Boros into the ground. Why won't you just die already? Because you're not strong enough. Just how much further do you plan on pushing me anyway? I'll drill into the core of the earth if I have to. As much as I would love to test that, I'm afraid it might do too much damage to this planet. And I'm enjoying myself far too much here to allow that to happen. As he says those words, Boros's body begins to radiate even more energy. Lightning surrounds the alien as he powers up to his full power. The raw intensity of his aura starts disintegrating the centipede's mandibles. Boros leans back, winding up a punch. This has been quite fun. Thank you for entertaining me. Goodbye, insect. He rockets his fist at Sage Centipede's head. The punch makes contact with the creature's face and completely destroys it. The force of the impact travels throughout the insect's whole body, vaporizing the entire creature from head to tail, including his regeneration core. Boros jumps out of the crater the centipede had drilled him into before suddenly remembering something. Wait. I completely forgot to ask him about God. Oh well. I know that whoever God is, he's aware of me. He's bound to send more creatures my way. I'll just ask one of them when they come. For now I should get back to the battle.
Don't want to miss the rest of the fun. The alien monologues before getting an idea. Still at full power, he walks over to the foot of the mountain Tatsumaki had made. Let's see if this works. He leans back and punches the bottom of the mega mountain. The entire continent-sized construct blows over. At the peak, Tatsumaki, Sairochi and Platinum S can feel the impact as the mountain is pushed several hundred meters. Everything rumbles and shakes. Just what the hell is going on down there? Boros grabs the bottom of the continent and, pulling all of his energy into his arms and back, throws the entire thing into the air. The mega continent rises into the stratosphere, and then higher, and even higher as Boros jumps up and crashes into its bottom, pushing it even higher. In mere moments, the whole entire continent is launched into space. Tatsumaki holds her breath as the two monsters begin to panic. Then, Boros, still holding on to the Mega Mountain, starts to lean forward while keeping a tight grip on the continent, dragging it along with him. Soon, he flips the whole thing over. Tatsumaki is the first to realize what's about to happen and starts to fly as fast as possible, hoping to get out from under the continent. The second to come to his senses is Platinum S, and he attempts to do the same. Sayorochi, being the least mobile of the bunch, splits off a small part of herself, which transforms into a jet and begins to fly away, leaving the rest of her body behind. Planetary Devastation Impact! Boro screams as he kicks the continent with all of his strength, sending it crashing down into the earth. Just barely, Tatsumaki manages to fly out of range of the collision and makes it out. But the two monsters aren't so lucky. The impact causes massive tremors as the entire earth shakes. The power of the crash vibrates throughout the planet, causing gigantic tidal waves, enormous volcano eruptions and earthquakes never before seen on any other planet of the solar system. On the other side of the Earth, a long forgotten, sunken continent is pushed out onto the surface by the force of the coalition. Boros lands on the decimated ground. A literal 2,000 kilometers away, an exhausted and battered Tatsumaki lands on the ground as well. Even if she didn't get hit directly, the shockwave from the blast dealt some serious damage to her. Not to mention her being low on stamina after an extended battle. The green-haired Esper looks around in shock and horror. Just what in the world is that monster? How can a creature like this even exist? To launch an entire continent into space, flip it upside down and then crash it back down onto the planet. It's completely insane. She has to try to take it down. She must. She's the only one who could. However, the girl collapses from fatigue and the damage that she's been dealt. She tries to pull herself together, but in the end, passes out. Meanwhile... Boros closes his eye and lets out a sigh. It's over. Boros! Huh? The alien opens his eye and is shocked to find that the world around him has completely changed. Instead of the barren wasteland he was in a moment ago, now Boros finds himself in a completely different realm, with a ginormous structure similar to the surface of Jupiter looking at him. What the hell? What is this place? Boros! You wanted to know more about God? Well, here I am. A cold chill runs down the alien's spine. The power he's feeling, it's far greater than his own. The sensation of this superior presence starts to overwhelm Boros. Are you scared? No need to be. I do not wish to kill you. Not yet, at least. Though this might change depending on your answer. 
one answer. You wish to fight strong opponents. The ultimate foe to you right now is the fist that has turned against me. But you are far too weak to take it on as you are now. What are you talking about? I thought I was the one who turned against you somehow. That centipede said as much. That is true. There are two fists that have turned against me. You and the body. Sooner or later, I will deal with both of you. It is only a matter of time before I find a vessel capable of holding enough power to kill you. That's why I'm giving you an offer. Become my vessel, and in exchange, I shall give you power far beyond your wildest dreams. With it, you will be able to match and defeat Saitama. The resulting battle will surely satisfy your urge to fight. It is a deal that would benefit the both of us. Boros considers the offer for a moment. All this is a lot to take in. A sweat drop makes its way down the alien's face. This is the first time he's felt genuine fear. Huh. You've got to be kidding me. I am Boros, dominator of the universe. There is no way I would accept such an offer. He powers up. A blue aura surrounds the alien. Send any assassins you want my way. I'll take them all down. And after I do, I'll come for you as well. Insolent fool. Have it your way. Your final hour is approaching. At that moment, Boros returns to the real world, like nothing ever happened. The alien drops to his knees. He lets out heavy, ragged breaths as cold sweat covers his face. What was I thinking? Challenging that thing to a fight. It's stronger than me. Much stronger. If I want to have any chance of victory, I'll have to train myself, just like Saitama did. The alien's body trembles as he slowly gets back to his feet. However, even as Boros' body shakes, a grin creeps its way onto his face. The existence of a creature like this, a creature that Boros would need to grow stronger to defeat. It excites the alien. He begins looking forward to eventually facing him in a fight. After doing some training, of course. Suddenly, a blast erupts from the ground and two figures emerge. Saitama and Genos. Finally, we're out. My scanners picked up on an impossibly large change in our altitude, and then everything flipped upside down. For a moment, there wasn't even any gravity. Then our altitude suddenly went back down to normal, and a massive crash occurred. Finally, I picked up a life signal right above us and blasted us out. Just what in the world happened? Genos murmurs to himself. Ah, Saitama. You missed out on a lot. You can tell me about it later. Right now, I just want to go back to my apartment. Saitama answers, clearly not interested. A realization suddenly hits Boros. Saitama's apartment, along with the entirety of the city, is currently buried dozens of kilometers underground. The alien gives the two heroes an awkward look and rubs the back of his head. About that. In the end, most members of the Monster Association ended up dead from the impact of the continent. Gums and Fiorugli died to one of Homeless Emperor's blasts. 
Hellfire and Gale weren't in the Monster Association base that day, so they weren't affected in any way. Elder Centipede was killed by Tatsumaki. Sage Centipede was killed by Boros. Goketsu managed to escape unharmed. Overgrown Rover managed to escape unharmed. Phoenix Man managed to escape unharmed. Psycho and Orochi were killed by the planetary devastation impact. Evil Natural Water's tank was destroyed by the planetary devastation impact, but the creature itself managed to escape unharmed. And Platinum S. A hand emerges from the ground at the edge of the impact area of the fallen continent. A tired, battered and cracked Platinum S just barely makes it out of the rubble. Damn you, Boros. Just a second longer and I would have escaped unharmed. But as it happened, I was at the edge of the continent's impact. Had I been just a little closer to the center... <sighs> Damn you, Boros! I swear I'll come back stronger than ever. And when I do, I'll kill you! A couple thousand kilometers away from the raging monster, Tatsumaki lays unconscious when a figure walks up to her and taps her shoulder. Hey, are you alright? The green-haired woman slowly opens her eyes to see King. King! What happened to the monster? Did you kill it? What monster? Later that day, the Hero Association receives a report from Tatsumaki, stating the important events that happened that day. The report finishes with King defeating the monster that had flipped the continent. The entire association breathes a sigh of relief. Leave it to the strongest man on earth to get the job done, I suppose. <laughs>